Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with yet another 100% achievement guide and this time we are getting it all in Airy Broken Memories, a beautifully stunning visual adventure game developed and published by EpiXR Games. Now this is just as easy as the first one, so basically we'll be flying through 15 levels collecting feathers to piece together, well, your broken memories. Uh, <laughs> But the music is upbeat, it makes you feel entwined with the game as you're gliding beautifully through the air. Everything's also simple, controls are easy, uh, it's the left stick to move, right and left bumper to do a barrel roll if you want, you know, just because it looks pretty damn cute. As for the achievements, it is all story related, 15 done for completing all 15 levels, no missable ones, it's all fun, and it should get you done in roughly around 50 minutes to an hour. I've also tried doing a sort of a quick as direct path as I can to get it completed ASAP. So with that being said then, let us begin. So go ahead, press start game. There are the 15 levels that we'll be going through, uh, but we'll just be starting off at the bottom left hand corner, the castle, that is the first level. I suppose you can do them in any order if you really want, but you know, it makes no difference really, <laughs> to be honest. So yeah, obviously this is you know, if you played the first one, you can't stop, you can't slow down or anything. But, you know, like I said, it is just easy as hell anyway. So the first one is directly in front of us. And you can always tell, if you ever sort of play this on your own and you got stuck, if you sort of go up into the air, have a look around the map, you can just see it sort of glistening in the background, as you can see there. So go straight up now, and we'll be flying over the castle wall. And there's number two directly in front of us. Then head down to the right, past the church, and it'll be just in between these sort of graves right here. If you do hit anything, you just start off right at the beginning anyway. So the maps are not too big. It's really not too bad at all. So sort of fly out to where these uh, sticks are, and then make a little left right here. The reason being, we need to get a good angle, because it's just to the left of these trees next to a ladder. So we need to get a good angle, make sure... Sometimes you can miss it. You've got to be kind of sort of directly onto it. Otherwise, you'll just end up missing it and end up crashing. So go to the right here next to this um, bridge. And again, it'll be just on the ground. So, and then we'll just be turning around right, right now. And then just uh, gliding on up past, uh, staying sort of in the water to the right for the moment. Otherwise, yeah, like I said, some of these feathers, they can be in sort of tight places and there might be times where you just grab one and end up having a crash anyway because there's no way you can get out of that. So duck under the bridge and onto the left, under the bridge right here for feather number six out of nine. It, it kind of is a shame that you can't just, um, I don't know, push the A button or the X button to speed up or slow down or something, but hey, it's not too bad. But staying with the left hand side anyway and it might be a bit tricky to see as it's quite light but there is another feather on this rock right here and that and then just go up and then to the right basically we're coming back to where we started now and as you can see just by this building in this tree there is feather number eight go through the trees and then directly to your right and below you there it is, Feather 9 out of 9, that's the first level complete. For some reason, the first two achievements didn't unlock for me on screen, but they should unlock for you right about now. And then we just move on to level number 2. So then, level number two, we're on to the chess planes now, which is ultra realistic, because I remember seeing a chess plane once or twice in my life. Anyway, up and to the right, on top of this big massive chess piece, this is where we will find the first feather. And then just go left from here, and you'll see it basically in the middle of the map, um, directly on the ground. Now, all of these maps and these levels, they're not that big at all, so, but they might be hiding in some decent places. 
But of course, if you're following the guide, then it doesn't matter. So go to the left, try and avoid the tree as much as you can, <laughs> which will always be handy. It just makes for a quicker game. And then you can see the next feather in plain sight. <laughs> But, there you go, you know, again, trying to avoid everything, you know, you want to just keep avoiding crashing, to be honest, because nobody likes crashing. So stick him with a sort of left-hand edge next to the water, and you'll see it behind this next uh, chest piece. So go ahead, grab that, stick him with the left-hand side, and down a little bit, we can see the next one in plain view, there it is. And then just sort of nip off to the right. And just follow the water and you will see uh, the next, uh, number six, just under this uh, other chess puzzle piece. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Directly go to the right and you'll see it, see another one. Number seven floating on the rock there. Lovely job, mate. And then just keep uh, flying forward. Keep direct, uh, flying directly in front of you. And basically we're going to the other side of the map now, just behind these rocks right here. So yeah, doing barrel rolls if you want, it literally makes no difference, but it looks cute. So there we go, that's number 8 then, turn directly to your left again, trying to avoid the big massive chest piece that can fudge you up, son. And again, it's directly in front of you, number 9. And man, I tell you what, I love the music in this game. Oh, the music is incredible. And then just jump straight up, fly straight up over these rocks right here. Directly in front of you again. And then it'll be just on the other side. Bam, there it is. Right in front of you. And that is 10 out of 10. On to level 3. Oh, well, you know, if you try not to piss around and show off and just go straight for it, that'll also be handy. Uh, <laughs> Welcome to the Samurai level. I know everyone loves a good Samurai level, but basically this time we'll be following one feather only. So we collect one feather, then the next one appears. So there's the first one then directly in front of you. Go straight to the left, and the next one is up on these uh, little buildings right here. Stick it with the left-hand side. It'll be in front, directly in plain sight of you now, directly in front of you. So yeah, as I said, it's just one feather at a time, so you can't just go all around the map looking for them all. Go to the right then, and you can just see it. You'll have to be quite quick here, sort of duck down. As soon as you collect it, duck right back up as to avoid crashing, burning, and dying. Or slightly, a little bit. Go up the stream, or whatever. Go up the stream, into the waterfall. There is number five. Turn back around and stick on the left-hand side. This, this way, to be honest, I had no idea how the hell I was supposed to get out of this, so I am going to crash, burn, and die right here. Bam! And I didn't know the hell I could do that without getting out of there. If you manage, if you manage to do it, guys, <laughs> you are goddamn beautiful at games, and I love you. Anyway, so if you do end up getting it and managing to get your ass out of there, then all you'll have to do is go directly into this little sort of town area, and it is just underneath this little archway, sort of right here. And then from there, turn directly to the right. And again, it's just in plain sight. Turn back around then, and once again, it will be in that little sort of town area. Again, directly in front of you. Dive down, and the world is your oyster. Now you can samurai sword each other in stiff. Now we're on to level 4, the snow dogs. First one's directly in front of you, and I'm sure everyone can enjoy this one. Everybody loves dogs, and you're lying if you say you don't. Apart from if one really attacks you bad, you know? Anyway, keep sort of nipping off, gliding to the right, beautifully in the air, and we start seeing these big little cute little snow dogs. There they are, one big huge giant boy. Yeah, yeah, and he's directly in front of him, look, there he is, right in front of his nose. 
there's number three. So go off to the left now. And there will be one just on top of this sort of snowy little mountain right meow, right in front of this other little cute little puggy snow dog. I like dogs. I love them. Uh, grab that one then. And then to the left just a little bit. Grab the one to the right of the house right here. And then we can just go up and fly to the right. Yep, so the next one's going to be directly in front of this dog again. Do some cute little barrel rolls again if you so desire. Again, it makes no difference. In fact, it probably makes your job a little bit harder, to be honest, if you're trying to fly upside down. And because it's inverted controls then. But straight on from number six, we grab number seven. And then we're good for this area, so just fly straight up. Past this little good boy right here. Past his little butt. And it's going to be a... Uh... Yeah, it seems like sometimes it just takes a goddamn while. How you see so... <laughs> just gliding around for a while and you feel like nothing's sort of happening. But go off to the left, the left side of the mountain right here. And this is where we get number eight. Number eight. Number eight. I'm taking it to strange new places. Number eight. Number eight. Number eight. There we go. They are a lot of work, Mum said. And to be honest, the whole story of it, the whole, all of these broken memories in each level are extremely fascinating as well. So it's definitely worth giving them a read as you uh, fly on by. But because the because it's so bright, sometimes it sort of uh, messes you up a little bit. Which isn't all that good. So flying around the mountain. Number nine is right here. And we're going to get there eventually. And then just go to the left. Round the mountain to find number ten. And it seems like this snowstorm is just sort of slowing us down a bit. That's probably the only gripe I've got with this game. Is that I wish, again, like I said in the first first level. We could have just pushed a button or something to make us go a little bit quicker. At least that, or a little bit slower, at least one of the two. Again, try not to show off like I did right here and completely miss it. Die! So we'll try that one again, yeah? <laughs> Happy days. Level of five, the floating forest. Directly to your right then, you can see right there in between the rocks. Again, try not to crash. If you're good at driving, you shouldn't be able to crash. I'm not good at driving, that's why I crash a lot on here. Um, so directly in front of you, I actually edited out all the crashes because it makes me look good. Just around to the left and past these rocks, there's number three. And then it's, it's sort of on a direct path this is, so... Keep going straight, and you can see number four directly in front of you. We will be going directly to the right and down, just to grab number five, because that's one where we can, where you actually might forget about that one. So then just go back up to sort of where you came, up to the left, and you can see then number six, sort of past this tree on top of this rock. Again, do your best not to crash and burn right here. Number seven directly in front of you from there, and then you can already see number eight just in front of you. It might be a bit hard to see again with the light sort of shining on it, might be a bit hard to see. But then number nine is just a little bit to the right. And there it is. Number ten, go to the right and down a little bit, and then directly from here, immediately go right. And that is where number eleven is, and from here we can just crash, so crash and die. I gotta stop saying die, that's just stupid. But anyway, from the start point, go directly to your right, and it is just by these trees on the right hand side. And jobs are good, baby.
So we are now realistically in space. So turn around directly from the start and you can just see that big old massive gaping hole. <laughs> that means two things. Um, but there is something inside of that hole. <laughs> that also means two things. Now this is one of the longest ones that we are uh, that we've done so far, purely just because you know how it is. Space is so vast, so empty, and it just takes a while to fly to. They missed a trick with this one, though. They should have put like a little a little space helmet on the bird or something, or called the bird something spacey. I don't know. But they missed a trick and they should have done something fun with it. But anyway, turn around and you see the little space station on the left? That's where we're aiming for next. So, you know, take it all in. Enjoy space. Enjoy the enjoy the asteroids and enjoy the space station and the stars and the, the beautiful scenery. I'm not even going to make any space jokes this time. Because I'm nice to you like that. Okay then, maybe one or two. What did the astronaut do after he crashed into the moon? He apologized. Ah, ah, eh. I checked out a book on anti-gravity. I can't put it down. <laughs> uh, I wanted to have a space-themed birthday party, but there was no one to plan it. Plan it, get it? Eh. Anyway, so I'm going to stop. We're going to go directly to the right now. Um, after we pick up the second one, I hope you enjoyed them as much as... I sort of did. Ah, come on. you that, They're funny. In they funny? You know how I'm hilarious. <laughs> anyway, we are literally... You can probably just see the feathers just off into the distance. And this is what I mean. This one takes a quite a while. Just because this map is a little bit bigger. But there we go. We're finally getting there. Come on, baby. There we go. There's number three. Again, try not to crash into the... Into the pole or whatever that is there. And then off to the left. Again, you can just see it in the distance on top of the actual station. And from here again, just turn directly around. And again, you see it it's sort of in the top left-hand corner. That sort of uh, little space station, substation, whatever thing there. That's where we're heading next. So try and go to the left as much as you can because we'll need to be turning directly around from this one. So bam, grab that, turn directly to your right and go down and you can just see it on that little substation there. And we are sort of coming to the end. These next bunch of feathers are all sort of uh, mixed together, so which is nice, sort of bunched together. So directly in front of you there, go down and you can again you can see it in front of you as you're flying down. There it is. Bam, and then fly straight up. All the way up. We're just getting out of this little area here. And what we need to be doing then is sort of fly out a little bit and then just turn straight around. And you can see it. It'll be directly in front of you there. And then head down only once, sort of underneath this little bit here. And again, you can just see it again directly in front of you. And then from this one, if you fly up directly to your right, fly up and to your right, you'll be able to see it there. And that is Spache done. So now we are on to Western, which is level 7. So directly in front of you then, that is where the first feather is. And let's get the joke out of the way. So a cowboy walks into a German car showroom and shouts, Howdy. 
Funny, Audi, German car, cowboy say howdy. Anyway, so to the right, and then just under this bridge right here. Oh, God. That's where the feather is, directly up from there. Uh, you'll see it just on this sort of tram right here, or this train cart, or whatever the hell, whatever you want to call it from wherever you're from. And keep flying straight, and <laughs> that, that is where, and it's on the uh, train tracks. I am going to do a joke in every level from now on. I don't know why I didn't from the first one, but it's okay. You see one off in the distance, but we're going to leave that for now. Just keep going around the rock, and you'll see where number five is here. There that is. Number six then. To the right, it'll be directly in front of you. The one to the left of that we'll come back to in a little bit as well. Now go off to the right, get the one we've seen a little earlier. Which is just on top of this little ting right here. I can't even think of the name for it right now. Turn directly around. And we're going for the left side this time, rather than the right. There's two. But we go for the left, just in between these buildings. Duck it down again. Fly up, try not to crash, and then there's one above this bar right there. So be quite quick, and then straight in front of you, just in this little horse stable thing, there's number 10. So three in quick succession. Turn directly around, there's another one in front of this little church. Lovely, and then number 12 will be from where we've seen it a little bit earlier on, on the rest of the train, tram, car, train, rail thing. And that's the western one then. Welcome then to level 8. This is the Pirate Bay, and you know there's a joke coming up. So, <laughs> go to the right, off to the right first. We'll come to the joke a little bit later on. But this one is a very bright level, so it may be hard to see, but this one is just in front of the rocks. It's a very bright level, but turn directly to the right then, and you can just see it all flashing in between those sort of wrecks of the ship right here. And then fly around the ship. And now we're going to sort of start heading off to the left side of the island. We just get that first one out of the way first because it's closest to us. But what did the first mate see down the toilet? The captain's log. <laughs> uh, that was actually a very funny one. Top joke, son. Top joke. So anyway, go to the left. Buy these buildings. This one may be a bit tricky, but it's right by the water fountain. So fly directly down and then grab it. If you do end up missing it, we need to be turning back around here anyway for another one. So swing it all the way back around again if you do miss it you can just it, it might be a bit easier for you to do it that way if not turn to the left and there is another one by the next water fountain right there so that one's a little bit easier but can be a little bit tricky so anyway there we go we're turning around and we're going off to again the very left hand side island now again this level is so bright and especially when the writing on that comes up when you um, collect the feather it can be a little bit tricky to See, uh, but there are two on this little island right here, and the first one you'll see now directly sort of in the middle of these trees, there it is on that small island, and then if you turn around, and you can see it just by this little rock, the rock on its own, and now we can carry on, there's going to be another one in between these ships, or on this ship, which would be uh, feather number seven. There it is. So it is on the ship. Can be a bit tricky to see, but try and avoid crashing, you know, as much as best you can. Fly off to the left, and you can see it just in the middle of this little town area. There's number eight. And directly up, you can just see the next one sitting on the rock. And then from here, we will just keep going straight, because that is where number ten is. Just turn it directly around, and the closest sort of um, little land right there, that is where number 11 is, so it's directly in front of us, but again, you'll have to be careful, you have to sort of swoop in, grab it, and then fly off up and to the right as quick as you can, otherwise you'll end up crashing and dying, I mean burning, I mean crashing, 
So there it is, it's just coming up, it's just on the little bit of porch. So as soon as you grab it, fly off to the right so you don't crash. Jobs are good. And now this bit can be potentially quite tricky. I crashed every time except for when I recorded this. So I was happy with that. So, but it is quick though, so you've got to be quick. So you can just see it. So dive in from the top and then you can fly straight through. Fly straight up to the left and then there'll be a gap for us to dive down and go straight through which would be great. So again, you know, if you do crash, it's no biggie. You can just go back there. Turn directly around. You can see where the last one is. So it really doesn't matter if you crash at this point. So just slam it out. There we go. But yeah, for some reason, I was having a few issues crashing and everything every time I got to that point. Luckily, though, I managed to, uh, <laughs> so I managed to sort it out that time. But now we are on to level nine, and it is the mountain level. And this is another one like the Samurai level, so they're not dotted around everywhere, we're going for one at a time. And the first one is, well, you'll be able to see it, it's basically just directly in front of us. So grab this one, turn directly to your left to find the next one on the rock. Yeah, step above, a little bit up, and then sort of, and again, going to get a good little angle because we'll be turning right back around. Oh, by the way, why are mountains so funny? Because they are hilarious. Hill areas, hilarious. <laughs> Classic, hilarious stuff. Anyway, we could be grabbing number three and we'll be turning directly to the left once again You know, it, it's directly in front of us again, but this is another one of those levels that's quite long Can take quite a while to get to so I mean you've probably noticed it by now the longer we go into the game The area gets a little bit bigger still easy enough quick direct path to get to all the feathers But it does take a little bit while longer so straight up from there you can just see it there on your left just next to these uh, little bit of rock and sort of under the bridge-ish. And then from this point, turn directly to your right now. And then as soon as we grab this one, we'll obviously be turning directly back around because there's nowhere else to go. So once you grab this again, turn to your left, and once more you'll see it right in plain old view. I like this one because there's not much hiding them, so, you know, it's all good. But nip off to the left, get a good angle, we'll need to be sort of turning once again directly around and then from this point without crashing, head to the left and it's there on top of that rock. Again, you're going to be turning around, obviously, because there is nowhere else to go. And again, you will be able to see it's just sort of flashing up in the distance. So, yeah, go get that boy. So grab this, and as for the last one, it's right in front of us. And that's it for that one. Again, it was kind of like the space level. That was a bloody long one, that one. Well, like two minutes longer, but we got it, girl.
So now we are at the snow village. This is level 10 out of 15 and the first one would be just just to the left, slightly to the left, right in front of you. And you'd be able to see loads dotted about, but try not to sort of lose yourself in thinking, oh crap, where am I going? You know, try not to confuse yourself. I've got this direct path first down, so just follow where I'm going and you will be beautiful. So the second one is in this sort of tower castle right here. So you can see plenty dotted about, but we are going to the left and just down. You know, because I find if you think, right, I'll go for that one first, go for that one second, it, it, it can be kind of confusing, disorientating, and you'll end up just losing your head a little bit. So once we get to this one then, just go directly in front of us there. And all we're doing is basically sort of going right around the edge of the map first, as that is where the majority are. So grab number four, and you can see already see number five to the right, but time for a quick joke. Why was the snowman rummaging in the bag of carrots? He was picking his nose. <laughs> ah, these jokes are getting better by the level. <laughs> so don't go to the right for a minute. We're just heading into this little bit of castle. Again, you kind of will go through the window. Might be easier if you go through the door. I almost balls it up there. But again, if you want to, you can go round the castle and sort of turn in around this way. If it makes it easier for you because we need to go out through the door anyway and then just to the right of this castle exit is where the seventh feather is I hope you're enjoying the joke so far guys I made them all up myself after nicking them from Google <laughs> so thought I'd just enlighten enlighten you all while we wait to go to the next one so there we go directly in front of us then that is where number eight is Straight up, not crashing, go to the right. That is where we find number nine. And we'll be going castle diving once again. Uh, you can see it, it's basically right in the middle of this little bit of castle, so you should have enough room to go through one end and come out of the other, kind of like diarrhea. I mean, uh, something less sickening than that. Then just go to the right, and you can see it on the little pier right there. And for the final one, it's still remaining in this little town. Sort of head off to the left. You can see it's just between these sort of buildings right here. And there is number 12. On to level 11. So we're on to island now for level 11, which is always a nice place to be. So the first one is directly sort of to your left, just a little bit on this rock. We'll be doing and straight in front of you. The second one will be doing like a little sweep. And the third one is just above this palm tree. Also, quick time for a joke. Huh? Yeah, you know you want a joke. But anyway, go to the right first and you can just see where the fourth one is. So that'll be the first four on this island complete. And then make sure to go to the left because we will be heading to the left. You can just see the next one in between the rocks. So, my friend went to a Caribbean island. Jamaica? No, she wanted to go. Ah, did you get it? Jamaica? Did you make her? Jamaica? She wanted to go? I'm funny. Well, Google's funny anyway. So, from five, <laughs> you just go straight on. You can see it directly in front of you again on this palm tree. And number seven will be directly in front of you from there. Sort of in between the rocks. Again, tr try to make sure not to crash if you can help it. And then sort of, sort of off to the right a little bit. Which is where we can find number eight on a pier. On a matter pier? No, on a regular pier. Ah, I'm still funny. You can see the number nine is off to the right but what we'll do is go to the left we'll turn around we'll just get a, a better angle for us so we're not crashing and burning otherwise it can be so it can potentially be a little bit tricky 
but there we go this time we can just fly straight on through number 10 off to the right a little bit you can just see it on top of a floating rock or well, the feathers floating the rocks um, just buried in the sea and we've only got three more to collect and that will be directly in front of us and again you can just see them off in the distance it's what i mean about this game it's it's absolutely lovely it is beautiful it is brilliant and there's and everything is sort of in plain sight so it's lovely to see always happy there's number 11 on this rock you can then as well see number 12 which is just off to the right again sitting on a rock and then number 13 is basically if we fly to the right there it is number 13 job done that's the island level done Next, we are on Urban, which is a whole bunch of ships and stuff. You know, where oil rig looks like where oil rigs and that go. So, anyway, first of all, again, first one straight ahead of us on these um, sort of shipping crates right here. And then we'll go straight to the left. We'll be doing exactly what we did in the last one and just sort of making a left all around the map. So, there's number two. And. If you take a look, you can see number three is sort of to just to the right of where we are now. So there's that in between the trees. Again, trying to crash if you can help it. And then we'll be going just around the rocks to get number four. So, uh, which sailors blow their noses most often? The anchor chiefs. Eh, anchor chiefs? Ah, <laughs> uh, well, I can't think of any more boat puns. Canoe? Ah! I got you with a doubler. I am funny. <laughs> anyway, so there we go. We're on to number four. There's the two jokes. Double joke specialist. Bam, bam. And we're just going straight on through the trees, looking how, how pretty all the mountains and stuff are. So there it is. There is number five. Number six is just to the right, and it's in these sort of... Um, I can't even think what they're called bloody barrel radioactive things but try and get a good height because we'll need to be dipping in and going straight out so from here go straight down grab it and then go straight up as to not crash sorry i can't remember what the bloody hell they called uh we're going straight ahead um for number seven anyway again you'll probably just be able to see it it's on the helipad just to the right of us now what are they called um radioactive God, that, anyway, we've passed it now, so there's no point. But we are going to the right now. And once again, yeah, little one, you can just see it off in the distance. Man, it might, it, might, it might screw up with your eyes sometimes. But it is in between this sort of crane right here. So make sure to go through and then duck down to the left. And then it's just under this little bridge type thing right here. So there's number nine. Number 10, if we go up, we need to be turning around, so we need to get another good angle. Turn it directly around, and it's directly on top of this thing here. That's number 10. Number 11, go straight down, and you can see it there in front of us. That is number 11. And then up, as to not crash, go to the right, and then you'll already see the shining shimmeringness from number 12. And that is the urban start side done. So here we go then, we've got three levels to go now, this is the war zone, so very much like the samurai one from earlier on, it's just a one time, uh, one feather we're going for, rather than being dotted about the place, uh, but this one sort of comes at you quite quickly, so we'll get the quick joke out of the way. How did the octopus go to war? Well armed, aha, so anyway, <laughs> well, that one's out the way. 
So there we go, to the left, just on this overturned track, and then straight on is where we will find number four. There's more feathers, but they do come at you a lot quicker than in previous levels. Now go to the right, you can see where number five is immediately. And then number six, just to the right a little bit. That is where number six is. Do, 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 do. So, turn around. And you'll see number seven again right ahead of you. On top of these little crate, uh, crates right here. And then turn around right again. And it will be uh, just in front of you on the road. And then I had to make a little bit of an edit here. So from this point, go to the right. And... It'll be just behind this crate. I actually went to the left and couldn't find it for ages for some bloody reason. So from there, go straight on. This is where number 10 is. And what we're doing again is just turning right back around. And you can see it. See number 11 to the right on a little bit of rock. And again, the music. I just loved all the way through. Just absolutely awesome. Number 12 then, turn around and it'll be just to the left of us, just slightly. Number 13 will be to the left. And then number 14 will, if you turn just to the left again, you will be able to see it all the way around in the distance. War zone is good. So welcome to the circus. First of all, uh, this is we've only got two levels ne left now. So you see the first one there. Directly, immediately go to the right. You can see it with these spinning um, death, grim reaper death things. Um, the map. If you go outside the map, it can push you back. That's fine because the third one will be right here, uh, just on the ground. And if you keep going straight, you'll just start seeing the fourth one. It'll be in between. Um, this sort of building right here So there's that one, but immediately go to the right again go through the cage And this is where number five is so this one comes at you even quicker So immediately go to the left and you can just see it up past the skull Again try and get as up, much up as you can much up as you can it doesn't make sense But as to avoid crashing to the left you can just see it on this uh, wagon wheel right here Wagon wheels of chocolate, I meant just a cart. And then if you go to the left again, you can then see the next one, which is up on top of the building. And then number nine will be directly in front of you. So time for a quick joke, quick. Why are circus performers often stressed? Because their job is intense. Ah, get it, intense. <laughs> That's funny. And a clown held a door up with me the other day. I thought, what a nice jester. <laughs> jester, jester, that's hilarious. Anyway, when you complete the circus level, it does back you out to the main menu for some reason, but we are on to the final one, the end level, which is kind of like a cute little Japanese town. Again, this is a very bright level, so, you know, just be careful. Um, turn your brightness down. I'm not sure if that makes too much of a difference, but... Again, we're looking for 15 feathers. Again, this could look complicated, but it's really not bad. So the first one's directly ahead of you. Number two, then, go under this traffic light here, and we'll be needing to go to the left. So go directly to the left when you collect that, uh, because this is where we collect number three. Go to the left again, and it'll be up on top of a tree this time, or on top of the lamppost, sorry. And then just to the left a little bit, number five is on top of this building. Go to the right, just where this building is now, to get number six. Turn to the left to get number seven on the sort of building with a spotlight there. Then immediately go to the right, and you can just see it on the tall glass building, or whatever that is, that is number eight. So get a good angle now, so turn all the way directly around, past this shield or whatever there on the left to get feathers number nine. 
Uh, feather number 10 will be directly in front of you. Go a little bit further on. Now, now we need to make a direct right. Again, try to avoid all the little obstacles that can crash. We've got number 11 up in a tree. And then just go past this. Number 12 will be in front of us on a road. So go to the left again. This one, exactly. It just comes straight at you. Like a whole bunch of penises in an orgy. And then number 12, uh, number 13 is on a building. Number 14 then is on another building to the left directly in front of us. In fact, it's on that same, it's near that same spotlight building. Get a good angle, turn around, and number 15 will be right on the spotlight, right in front of us, and that will be that. So, there we go then, guys. Airy Broken Memories is now completed and done. So, yeah, I really hope you enjoyed the game. It was easy, but it also was very beautiful. There's nothing left for us to do now. So, again, thank you so much for um, watching the video. Hopefully, it helped you get a nice, easy thousand. Uh, if it did, of course, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, check me out on all my social medias. I'm on Twitter, of course, Facebook, Instagram, Xbox, and I'm on Patreon now. With All the links will be provided in the description below. A massive, massive shout out and thank you for Tim G84 for continuing to support the show on Patreon. But that is that. Thank you again, guys. See you in the next video. Big love.